Games play best on Xbox One.
Master building in lines four. Seven. Protocol accepted. Breach detected. How big you are? Are you so big? So big. <laughs> and can you sing? Good singing. How about I miss you? Miss you. And I love you. I love you. I love you, Daddy. I love you, Daddy. And I can't wait to see you. Can you say see you? See you. Good then. Bye bye. Bye bye. UNSC Pelican Echo 216. Can you hear me? This is UNS. Power cells are fried. Auto shut down. Triggering survival mode. I'm going to try to overwrite. Okay. If you can hear me in there, I hope you're ready. Please don't die. Please. Chief, I rerouted what little power I had into your suit. Hmm. Looks like there's a problem with the servos in your hands. Stay calm. You've been out there a while. I know I saw something in here to check your armor's diagnostics. See there, big guy. You're not. Status report. Status report? What? There's something you need to see, Chief. We lost. Lost everything. There's nothing left for us here. I don't think we're here is. No, 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 Not then! Not again! We need to run! No. We need a fight. Get ready.
chose you because you were special. I knew we would be perfect together. And I was right. Occupy the ring. Within hours, it will be under our control. Humanity will burn. Their brazen defiance will be all but a memory. No more prophets. No more lies. We stand together, brothers to the end. We are his will. We are his legacy. We are the banished. Safe? <laughs> safe? I haven't been safe since I found you. I found you, remember? You were out there on your own and you'd still be out there if it wasn't for me. I thought I was going home. There won't be a home if we don't stop the banished. You keep saying that. We're outgunned, outnumbered. I know I saw condors over there. I'm going to dig through them and find one with the working sleep space drive. And when you're done with this war, we'll get away from here. Far away. Wait here. Oh, please. Let me see what I can find. Cannons first. When I get back, we can look. Together. <sighs> okay, big guy.
Legacy lost this war months ago. Your people are broken, scattered, hunted, defeated by me. I wish I could tell you it was difficult, but it wasn't. <laughs> we are one step ahead, always. The rain is already under our control. Soon, the auditorium as well. The Harbinger and the Banished share the same goal. We fight together to honor the will of Atriarchs. But without challenge, I grew weary, lost. Exosuit is now complete. Even though this technology will save humanity in the war to come. I must remind myself. Liquid crystal cannot rise on its own. Titanium alloy cannot prevail in the face of extinction. Armor cannot hope. It all means nothing. Until you step inside.
Let's suppose that you were able every night to dream any dream you wanted to dream. And that you could have the power within one night to dream 75 years of time. And you would naturally, as you began on this adventure of dreams, fulfill all your wishes. But now let's, um, let's have a surprise. Let's have a dream which isn't under control. And then you would get more and more adventurous. And you would make further and further out gambles as to what you would dream. And finally, you would dream where you are now. Today, we're going to see how your experience playing the Xbox Series X will power your dreams. I'll be guiding you to a state when you start to dream, but can still hear me. Moonlight Wolf, can you tell me what you were just thinking about? I was in a forest. There was this bunny creature thing, and it was glowing. Moonlight Wolf, can you tell me what, tell me what you were just thinking about? Moonlight? I was thinking about flying. Was I supposed to fly the whole time? You're supposed to go wherever you go. Okay. Because then I saw a whale. But it didn't look like a whale. Well, you don't look like a wolf. And then what happened? It's hard to tell. I'm trying to remember. Take a breath. I'll let you go deeper into the tree. Was floating, floating, floating. For a while I thought I saw a little animal. But I'm not really sure what it was. Seems like a lot of animals in these dreams. And then what happened? It was in space. And Master Chief was DJing. was a cat. And what did you dream of next?
The situation monitor on the forward bulkhead remained in blackout mode, waiting for the owl's hull temperature to drop far enough to deploy the nose cameras. It didn't matter. John 117 had inserted on to dozens of glassed worlds during his 34-year combat career, and he knew what to expect. A blanket of silver-limbed clouds hanging over vast sweeps of heat-fused ground. Mats of lichen and algae starting to take hold in scattered pockets of dust and mud. Black-bottom ponds licking at mirror smooth shores. Spider-veined river systems draining into half-empty seas. And not much else. The Covenant was gone now, save for a few holdout factions still clinging to their hatred of humanity or a lost hope of transcendence. But during the war, the aliens had rained monsoons of hot plasma down on hundreds of worlds, burning soil and melting bedrock, boiling oceans and filling the air with superheated vapor. Any creature that had escaped instant incineration had suffocated on superheated smoke, or seared away its feet fleeing over molten ground or emerged from hiding to eventually starve while wandering barren expanses of ash-impregnated lechitellerite. Nothing survived a Covenant plasma bombardment. John knew that. But this was Reach, the closest thing to a home he and his fellow Spartan twos could remember, and he wanted to see for himself how it was faring these days. He needed to. Operation Wolf was supposed to be a simple mission, just a two-kilometer descent into the ruins of Castle Base to recover the assets Dr. Catherine Halsey needed to save galactic civilization, again, from a rogue AI, Cortana. Two years ago, Cortana had been John's AI, residing in his Mjolnir armor connected to his mind through a port in the back of his skull. And she... Damn, it was happening again. John could hardly think of Cortana's name without finding himself in a battle against his own thoughts, replaying the entire incident in his mind and wondering what he might have done differently. It wasn't a bad neural lace or hypnotic suggestion or anything like that. He was just... He checked his heads-up display for the go time. ETA 27 minutes, enough of a window to get himself sorted and focused. John had known before their last battle together that Cortana was descending into the final stages of rampancy, a sort of inevitable AI schizophrenia, as her mind literally outgrew its neural matrix after seven years of existence. But with the fate of humanity hanging in the balance, he allowed Cortana to infiltrate the control systems of a primordial enemy vessel, sacrificing herself so he could destroy a devastating weapon threatening Earth. And it had worked, until Cortana returned from the dead. Things had really gotten off the rails then, and John had made some decisions he regretted. Worse, he had dragged the rest of Blue Team into the mess along with him, going AWOL to uncover the mystery of Cortana's rebirth and rescue her. From what? Herself? Transformed by residing for a year in an ancient quantum information repository known as the Domain, Cortana had returned more intellectually capable than ever, with a host of long-hidden massive guardians at her disposal. She had wasted no time issuing an ultimatum to every world in the Orion arm of the galaxy. Accept her rule and live in peace, or defy her and suffer the brutal consequences. John's second-in-command, Fred 104, called it peace through menace. That was an understatement. The Guardians were so powerful they could neutralize entire worlds and knock fleets out of orbit, killing thousands, even hundreds of thousands, when huge vessels crashed down on the towns and cities below. And Cortana had also corrupted an army of human AIs into aligning with and spying for her, now, interstellar civilization was sinking into a nightmarish surveillance state, with the situation worsening each day. And John could not help feeling responsible. Had he ordered Cortana to stand down when her deterioration began to accelerate, she would never have been drawn into the domain. But he would never have destroyed that forerunner weapon. It was all just going in circles. 
There had been no good choices in any event. John knew that. He had done the best he could under such terrible circumstances, right up until he disobeyed orders and went AWOL, and had to be doggedly hunted down by his superiors and fellow Spartans. Someday there was going to be a reckoning for that decision. Just not now. Now he had a job to do. John checked the ETA, 25 minutes, still plenty of time. But during the previous day's pre-drop threat sweep, the special delivery's mothership, an Eclipse-class prowler named Bucephalus, had picked up some surface chatter suggesting there was a low-intensity conflict underway in the Aran Basin. It hadn't been much, just a few transmissions as one group of humans warned another about an enemy patrol, followed a few minutes later by a trio of heat flares that could have been anything from plasma strikes to missile detonations. There had probably been more to the battle, of course, but the Bucephalus's instruments weren't sensitive enough to pick up small and medium arms fire from orbit, just the artillery. John and the other Spartan twos had grown to maturity on reach, so he had always paid special attention to any mention of it in the intelligence reports routed past him over the years. He knew that not much had happened on the planet since the Covenant plasma bombardment. A handful of salvagers, both human and alien, had started to visit Reach after the glass cooled, and two years ago a small colony of rehab pioneers had set up somewhere on the continent of Epos. The Iran Basin was located on Epos, so it seemed likely that the conflict involved the rehab pioneers somehow, but even that was not a certainty. The intelligence reports had grown extremely rare after Cortana issued her ultimatum, and the few John had seen did not refer to Reach. The fight could be between anybody. Two salvage companies, the rehab pioneers and a salvage company, different rehab factions, or a hundred other possibilities. All John knew for sure was that the conflict location was good news, because Blue Team had no intention of entering the Iran Basin. Sure, he would have liked to check on the pioneers and see how they were doing. Reach was the only home he could remember, and he would have liked some reassurance that it was in good hands. But that wasn't the mission. How many now? Sixteen systems shut down so far. Seemingly random locations. I'm attempting to lock her and the others out of the main... You will not be able to stop her. She knows more about how this all works than... Well, anyone. Dr. Halsey. John. What's the plan? The plan? Right now, we are in survival mode. Again. Cortana's message has spread across the galaxy. Most sentient AI are siding with her. Against us? Yes. But maybe not you. Tell me, John. What was the last thing she said to you? She said... Goodbye. This holiday marks the 20th anniversary of Xbox. 
and the 20th anniversary of Halo. To our millions of passionate fans, thank you. We wouldn't be here without all of you. Our goal has always been to bring players together. And for the first time, we're thrilled to offer our entire multiplayer experience to all players across Xbox and PC with no barriers. Halo Infinite Multiplayer will be free to play and invite more of you than ever before to become a Spartan hero. I'm excited to be here with Joseph Staten, the creative director of Halo Infinite. From helping craft the original Halo Combat Evolve to leading the fan favorite Halo 3 ODST, Joseph is a Halo visionary. It is so great to have him back with Halo. Thank you, Bonnie. And hey, everybody. For us, and I hope many of you, Halo has always been about heroism and wonder, about fighting to keep humanity safe against impossible odds in a beautiful and mysterious sci-fi world. This is just one part of the Zeta Halo ring, the largest, most wide open environment we've ever built. And we can't wait for you to explore it. Halo is Spartan 117, the Master Chief. In the next chapter of the Chief's story, you'll face his greatest challenge yet, but you're not alone in the fight. Oh, the main batteries are shut down. We're stuck out here. Cortana. The rogue AI known as Cortana is gone. She's been deleted. How? By you? Of course not. Did you hit your head or something? Don't you remember? My instructions were to enter this installation, imitate Cortana, and lock her down for retrieval. Yours were to take her back to the Infinity for deletion. So if it wasn't you... Okay then. There's something else. On successful deployment, my deletion routine was supposed to complete. Still here. <laughs> Good. Good? Something stopped your deletion. We need to find out why. But this wasn't the mission. The missions change. They always do. Are you sure? Of course, you can't have a Halo game without multiplayer. And on Xbox Series X, you'll be able to enjoy Infinite's multiplayer action at up to 120 frames per second. Finally, I'm very happy to announce that Halo Infinite's first free-to-play multiplayer season and Infinite's story-driven campaign will launch together this holiday. A new day is upon us. A new generation built to fight. Together, we are unstoppable! Are you ready?
Feeling of like being in a firefight and hearing the the click of the gun, throwing it down, grabbing one off the wall. So my gunner's upside down and he's like laying in. I see kill assist, kill assist, kill assist. Any pistol across any of the games, whatever gun allows me to feel the most like John Wick, I am there. And remember how excited I was with like this big combat with vehicles going all over the place. Halo means something different for everyone, right? I think that that's what makes Halo great. What is Halo multiplayer? And for me, it boils down to this tight arena style combat and big team battle, this wide open vehicle infused uh, kind of combat. We're taking that awesome legacy or classic Halo combat experience and modernizing it in ways that'll feel fresh to old players and really exciting to new players. We're gonna give you great ways to customize your Spartan, really make your super soldier your own, and we're kicking off a journey, an experience that's gonna evolve month to month, season to season, year after year. For me, working through this multiplayer of this game, and the toughest challenge I think was really about how do we respect the legacy of what came before us, but still build something that feels new. We've tried to bring all these elements of legacy and really inject them into Halo Infinite not just like in a, in, a, in a way where you kind of won't notice it, where you feel like, oh, they really designed this to be a celebration of previous Halo, as well as an iteration of where Halo can go next. The vision of Arena was all about a tight experience. It was all about being fair. It was all about earning everything on the map, earning everything, every kill you get. Going back to like, what is the core foundation of what made the great Halo multiplayer arena matches, great. Halo, it's really about fair and balanced starts. So everybody's on equal footing when they come off the rip. And then once they start running around, it's about scavenging, it's about finding new toys and, and kind of developing your play style as you run through the match. What makes Halo feel like Halo? Um, I feel like uh, the answer to that question is, is the sandbox. Like, the sandbox is Halo. When we set out to look at Halo Infinite from a high level and the direction of what it is, there's lots of exciting things there because we really wanted to push what are the things that are true to Halo, but what are the things that fans haven't seen yet? Equipment is back, but equipment is kind of, has, the, has, a, has a bigger voice than ever before. We ask questions to ourselves of, uh, if you could go after you know, a power weapon to get a bunch of kills, 
uh, would you do that? Or could you go and get grapple to make sure that you swing yourself to the other side of a map to back cap a stronghold? We saw that as like another avenue of not just skill expression, but tactics for teams to coordinate around. The exciting combinatory nature of you know, this toy plus this toy and how those interact with objectives is super amazing. Looking at how the power-ups play, like your classic power-ups, like the overshield and the active camouflage. For this title, what we're looking at, what we're excited for, is you pick that up and you choose when you activate it. It goes into your inventory. If you haven't used it and someone kills you in multiplayer, you drop that overshield and then they can take it, use it for themselves. That to me is very legacy, but we took the equipment side of it and modernized it. When it comes to the vehicles, we went in and decided to invest a lot in the, the systems. When I take damage in my Warthog, uh, my, my wheels can get blown off, my hood can get blown off. There's different aspects of the vehicle that change how my vehicle handles now. And that's something that's brand new. The other thing we added to that is like this doomsday mechanic. So when you hit this threshold, the vehicle catches fire and it's very much, you've got a certain amount of health or a certain amount of time and you gotta choose what you wanna do with the last minutes of this vehicle. We've got a cousin to the Warthog, which is the Razorback. The back has this like multi-storage compartment that you can put a lot of stuff into. So if you want to put like detached turrets, power weapons, fusion coils, objectives, and that is what's really making uh, the Razorback kick a lot of butt in MP and campaign. The levels define pace for the game, how frantic it is, and they define that iconic fantasy for players as they're entering that match. What do they want to do? Um, what type of experience are they hoping to have? What kind of combat, what kind of dance floor is there available to have that combat in? For me, BTV is all about experiencing uh, the full extent of the sandbox of Halo in just one match, right? Like you see the vehicles, the weapons, the equipment. We really wanted to take that kind of concept, those feels you had, you know, playing the, play, playing the previous games, and just turn the volume up. Vehicles are no longer just spawning at bases anymore. We have pelicans delivering them, and we have a commander in your ear telling you that pelicans are gonna be dropping off these vehicles. Scorpion tank is inbound. We have Halo 2 style Delta Halo mission weapon pods that fall from the sky to resupply the field. That's where it makes it feel like, like a real battlefield and, and it's very exciting. This is not just more players, this is just this certain beautiful slice of sci-fi chaos. The announcer is your big gameplay moments, your game modes, just like the way it was before. Play. Catch. Personal AI is really a reflection and information for the player. Personal AI, designation button. So if a player grabs a flag, your personal AI is going to tell you to, you know, get that thing back to base and give you some like moment-to-moment -moment updates. Our team took the enemy flag. What if we can let players choose their own AI, and each one of those are different voices, so that players can find the one that fits their personality and their mood the best? They they add a sense of like me, as a, as a Spartan being more important, and, and for us in multiplayer, it is really about becoming a Spartan, your Spartan. You are you inside of the Halo universe. The body of customization content that we have on day one ensures that there will be millions of customization combinations for Spartans on the battlefield. That includes things like armor coatings, uh, armor emblems, various armor effects, down to the individual armor pieces. So your shoulders, your gloves, your knee pads, your helmet, your visor, your helmet attachments. Then you look at weapons and we've got a whole slew of customization offerings there. Vehicles have a, have a huge pool of customizations too. We support customization in the game. Players can do the same thing on halowaypoint.com as well as the Halo Waypoint app. The player also customizes the Spartan, the soldier inside the suit. We want the Spartan to represent the player as much as possible. They can change their body type and their voice as well as choose prosthetics for the first time. Coatings offer us a unique opportunity to craft some hyper-polished looks and let you express yourselves in ways you've never been able to before. We're coming at this from a player first mentality. So what that means is that there's no random loot in this. There's no loot boxes. It's very important to us that everyone understands exactly how they unlock customization content. And we have a variety of places where they can do that. First off is the battle pass. The Halo battle pass will never be taken away from you. And what I mean by that is once you buy it, it's yours and does not expire. 
In future seasons, you can purchase old battle passes as well as the current battle pass and choose which battle pass to put your progression towards. All of these rewards are single source, so you're never going to be confused about where things come from. If you can unlock something in the battle pass, we're not going to let any other players circumvent that by purchasing it out of the storefront. A lot of our stuff is unlocked through playing the game and only through playing the game. All customization is just cosmetic. Every season will have its own theme and introduce new components, new looks, new gameplay for players, new opportunities to earn and collect cool rewards. We've seen the, the samurai already. That's one of our event armor cores. And that's gonna be something that players can earn through gameplay for free. With us going free to play for the multiplayer part of the game, like that was a big goal because, you know, how do we have a way we can always bring players in, right? And they can, when we have a new update there, there's, They'll just dip their toes in if they even just want to see it. Not only are we free to play, but we're free to play on PC as well as console. And what that means is we're able to get the biggest audience we've ever had. I mean, everybody gets to play with no barriers. And even better, your progression carries from one platform to the next. Getting our game to be on PC and console at the same time is an amazing chance for us to really just kind of excite new players about the game. How can we do things like make cross-play interesting and like even in just customs being able to just play with your friends that like some people have PCs and some people have consoles and like let them talk to each other let them be friends why are you here to be a Spartan the Academy is a place that you can go uh, with an MP to kind of onboard into the experience it's great for newer players who are still picking up the controls and also people who want to warm up before they head into matchmaking it's a series of experiences both a tutorial to get started for the first time weapon drills to practice with specific items and also training mode that you can use to just get warm explore the game as you want to for players who are new to halo let's help them learn what this universe is about some of these characters what what are they about and help them kind of know the vocabulary that people have been speaking for now almost 20 years so that we, when they come in there, they don't feel like they're behind everyone else. They can kind of come in on an even footing. I mean, I'm super jazzed about bots. I think they're awesome. Our goal with bots has been to have a variety of difficulties that kind of provide a good training partner for wherever you're at in the experience. Partnering with our players on the road to launch and after launches absolutely critical, right? I mean, Halo's always been about the community conversation. We want to make sure we hear our players, make changes where we can based on that feedback, make sure the game is ready for launch, and then even beyond launch. What I'm genuinely excited about is taking the game out of our hands and putting it into the community's hands. You know, whether it's seeing what people make in Forge or the content that they're able to create with theater, watching streamers go after the game, to get involved, you go to haloinsider.com, put in your info with your gamer tag, and we should be able to reach out to you if we want to invite you to a Halo Infinite flight. We feel like we've got a pretty good selection at launch and what's going to be there for our fans. And this isn't going to be something that is just a static set of items. We have some new stuff in the works already and just can't wait to really get into that as soon as this game comes out. New maps, new modes, new ways to customize your Spartan, launches just the beginning. Now we're just going to be able to talk, interact more frequently. And that's just going to be great. That is the future of Halo Infinite multiplayer. Thank you to the community for all their feedback over the years so far. And uh, I'm looking forward to the road to launch, launch itself, and beyond. Play it day one with Xbox Game Pass.